Alright, hey guys, I wanted to do a video series on genetics. We're going to start with recessive traits, um, then I'm going to move on to uh, co dominance, then dominance, and then uh, what happens when you mix like co dominance and dominance with recessives. And I'm going to start with this one. This is basics for recessives, then I'm going to get on to more advanced recessives in a different video. It'll be later on this week or next week or something like that. So let's just let's just do an example of a recessive gene. I'm gonna go with piebald. In this case, big P is gonna equal the normal gene. Little P is gonna equal the piebald gene. Okay? Let's say you breed a piebald to a normal. Well first let's start off with, okay, you've got a piebald male. He's producing sperm, okay? Here's his cell, and it's got two copies of the piebald gene in it, because in order for a recessive gene to, to present itself, to show itself, to be seen, it has to have, the animal has to have two copies of that recessive gene. Now, when this cell undergoes meiosis to become a sex cell or a gamete, um, it will divide and produce two sperm cells. Half of the genetic information in the cell will split and go into that gamete. So now you've got a sperm cell carrying one copy of the gene and another sperm cell carrying one copy of the gene. We'll put little tails on them. I don't know if snake sperm have tails, but that's what they look like. <laughs> so now, each sperm is carrying that one copy of the piebald gene. Okay? So, same deal is going to happen for the female normal. Alright, let's just say the normal is completely normal. She's got two big peas there. There's her egg, or her cell that's going to become eggs. And then you split, down they go, you got one cell with a big P, one egg cell with a big P. Boom. There are your gametes. So, you know, the sperm is going to meet this egg, and you're going to have your, your snake, your baby snake. So, that breeding, let's say, here's the Mendelian square, or Punnett square. It's typical standard genetic, you know, people use it to express genetics. You got your male up, I'm gonna put your male up top. So here's little p, little p, big p, big p on the side, that's the mom. Okay? So you have big p, little p, big p, little p, big p, little p, big p, little p. All of these babies. 100% chance that each egg is going to equal a big P and a little P. Now, that means that they carry one copy of the normal gene, one copy of the piebald gene. Because you need two copies of the piebald gene for the gene to express itself, those babies will look normal. The normal gene will express itself, the babies will look normal. They, however, 100% chance that each egg will carry the piebald gene. So every one of those babies has a 100% chance of carrying the piebald gene and is called a 100% heterozygous for piebald. Or het for pied. Het for piebald, whatever you want to call it. If you're going to buy a het for pied, it's really good to buy it from a trusted breeder, somebody with a decent reputation. Because they look like normals. So you don't know until you breed them whether or not you're getting a het for pied or a normal. And even then, you don't know if you're gonna if you if you're gonna have a heifer pied a normal until you breed it to something that carries a piebald gene for sure, and you prove out piebalds. Only way to know if you have a heifer pied. Now, some people claim you can look at markers on the piebalds, but they're not. It's not a science. Some heifer pieds have markers. Some heifer pieds don't. So let's say you take and you hold back. Two of those heifer pieds, or you sell somebody some of it, because there's no reason for you to hold back all the heifer pieds when you have a piebald male, which I'll get into after. 
Okay, so you sell somebody a, a pair of those Hetfer piebalds, okay? They breed those Hetfer piebalds. So up here, they got big P, little P. Big P, little P. Now, for these, should have used different letters. You have two big P's, big P, little P, big P, little P, two little P's. For this clutch, that means each egg has a 25% chance of equaling a complete normal, normal being the two big P's, a 50% chance of being het for pied, big P, little P, and a 25% chance of being a piebald. These babies right here, what you're going for? They they can they have two copies of the gene. They are piebalds. Now this is where it gets a little tricky. Remember how I said that the babies before had a hundred percent chance of carrying the piebald gene. Therefore, they are a one hundred percent het pied. You know they are het pied because you have normals and het pieds in this clutch. You don't know them apart from each other. So your babies could be normals. They could be het pieds. You take them. And you put them, you put them into one pile, and you call them 66% chance. So they have a 66% chance, chance of being het for piebald. Again, you won't know if they are or not until you breed them. So if you ever see somebody selling that. Now you know, you know, if you didn't know it before. You could be buying a normal, you could be buying a hat pied. You're taking a gamble. Um, personally, I prefer to pay a little bit more and just get the 100% hat pieds from somebody I trust. You know what you're getting. So, now let's say, let's say you held back some of the female hat pieds from the first clutch yourself because you wanted future breeders. Okay? And you breed them back to their dad, which is completely normal in the snake world. We do it all the time. So, here's dad up here. Two little peas. Here's big P, little P for mom. Okay, so you got big P, little P. Big P, little P. Little P, little P. Little P, little P. Each one of these eggs has a 50% chance of being het for piebald. And a 50% chance of being an actual piebald. Now, that's easy to know because anything that looks normal in that clutch is going to be het for piebald, and then the rest are going to be piebalds. So, you know, to me, that's the best breeding um, a visual to a het if you want to save some time and money. You can do het to het, but I've heard of people breeding hets to hets that they knew were hets going three seasons, not getting the odds, you know, to get the piebald. Um, like I said, it's an odds game. It's it's a numbers game. Obviously, the more eggs you have, the better chance you have of hatching your piebald. But, you know, like these chances up here of doing a head-to-head -head breeding, you know, it's 25% chance per egg of getting a piebald. Whereas here you have a 50% chance of per egg of getting a piebald. Your chances are much higher on this. And then the last breeding you can do with the recessives, um which is obvious, is if you breed a piebald to a piebald, they're only going to pass on the piebald genes. I'm not even going to map that out for you, because that means all your babies are going to, every egg is going to be piebald. So next video, I'm going to get into mixing things, and that's when it's going to get a little bit more confusing. Because um, you've got, here you've got, you know, four slots. If you breed other recessive traits, recessive traits to recessive traits, now you're going to be looking at... 16 squares so your odds start dropping that's why double recessives are so difficult to get their your hands on you know it's hard to get a piebald clown because you have a 1 in 16 chance of getting it per egg I don't know what the percentage is on that I'll look it up but this is flashing back to college biology and high school biology and it's been a while for me so yeah that's recessive traits uh, it works the same for piebalds ghosts hypos um, Clowns, albinos, desert ghosts, the morph desert ghosts, not like a 
a desert morph mixed with a ghost. That's different. I wish people would name things differently when morphs already exist and they use their names for other things. But, uh, any other recessive trait out there, that's how it works. So, hope you enjoyed this video. There will be more to come. Like I said, on recessive traits next, I will, uh, up it a little bit, you know, start mixing recessives. Oh, uh, Xanthics. Xanthics are recessive too. I want to cover them. But make sure to like, comment, sub if you haven't. And uh, keep an eye out for more videos. Out. Oh.